can ride a bicycle, I can work on my computer, I can do quite a lot. Crossing the road may be difficult because um, I can see something coming but I'm not sure how close or how fast. So I like crossing when there are people near me. Eh? So I make sure and I stand, I make sure people come on maybe this side if the cars are supposedly coming from that side. So when they move, we move together, you know. I cross like a sheep crossing a road. <laughs> Nancy Wangwe can do all that. But what surprises many is the fact that she's blind. Her blindness started back when she was in primary school and her eyesight has worsened to the point where she is recognized legally as a blind person and can only see out of the corners of her eyes. My parents didn't even know that I had an eye condition until um, the teachers noticed that I'm not reading the blackboard, I'm, I'm making very funny spelling mistakes. So the eyesight was proper actually when I was young, but when I reached that standard, what, standard five, six, my grades deteriorated. And, and that's where now um, the teacher said, eh, um, that my mom needs to, you know, investigate further. When I was young, I could maybe read and the texts of uh, primary school were bigger. But when we went to high school, things now became thicker and, and the text smaller. So I had what we call visual aids. I know I had binoculars, I had uh, like telescopes, I had uh, big bulky things, which I, I, I used now to read. Now I can't read, I can't drive, of course. Even TV is, TV to me is like a radio. Naskiza kwanza. It's not what I ate or what my mother ate. It's just, they, they really don't know, but they call it a retinal dysfunction. And that's why they call it a macula, a macula, sorry, degeneration. All the doctors that are seen, both in the UK, in the States, even in India, they can't explain. Despite Nancy's condition, she has built a career and progressed thanks to technology, which ensures she is not dependent on other people to go about routine tasks. She advanced in her career and studied up to postgraduate level. She particularly likes her iPhone. The phone I use is really nice. It has um, accessibility in terms of visual. So it's able to read for me my SMSs, WhatsApps, I can make phone calls, I can do M-Pesa transactions. I can even do bank transactions. It's really cool. Good morning from CNN. The US is closing in on 3 million cases. It's important. Mm. Coronavirus, Ellipsis, Mexico. With my computer, of course, I have some devices whereby I'm able to do emails, PowerPoints, um, Excel, Word. I mean, there's nothing I cannot do with the technology that I have. For the visually impaired, technology makes life easier and enables them to become self-reliant. Derek Shimoli works at the Kenya Union for the Blind and has also experienced the benefits of advances in technology that enable him to communicate better. There is one product that Safaricom partnered with the DOT Corporation and the Kenya Union of the Blind, which you call the DOT Smartwatch is a wristwatch that is synchronized uh, to the mobile phone and it is via Bluetooth. You first of all download uh, the Dot Watch app. You're able to synchronize uh, this wristwatch, the Dot Watch, with the device so that you're able to access text messages. Safaricom is doing this to eliminate the issues of information being compromised to the third and the second and third person or third parties. For Irene Kirika, who works to empower blind and visually impaired students in Africa through assistive computer technology, says it's important to have content that can be accessed in a digital format. Most people with disabilities cannot access content simply. Think about all the print media that we have. Most people who are blind cannot access that. So when they have access to content that they are able to uh, consume in a digital format, content that's accessible, meaning that it's been designed in a way that it's inclusive to everyone, then they are able to, one, they can design any product they want to design. They can consume any information they want to consume. They can go to school, both lower and higher education. Um, they can become designers, teachers, developers. The reality is information is power. Despite the continuous emergence of available assistive technology for visually impaired persons, the cost of devices is still high. A calculator for the visually impaired cost an average of 50,000 shillings, 50 times the cost of an ordinary calculator. 
while a Braille machine costs 89,000 shillings, the same price as a laptop, and virtually every learning device costs more than 10 times more than the ordinary one. For Irene, companies that create products and services need to consider the needs of the visually impaired and people with disabilities and to work with experts to help develop things that will accommodate everyone's needs. So there's an app called Seeing AI that's really cool. It scans all the photos and pictures that someone has sent and describes it to you. There's one called um, Blind Abilities. It's for people who are visually challenged. They come together and share the different challenges and encourage each other. Actually, some of, this, some of these apps that I've discovered is because we've shared with other people who are visually challenged, whether it's like me, legally blind or blind. For the visually impaired, a speech software works magic. For the computers, I've seen softwares like JAWS, Job Access with Speech. Once your computer is fitted with that speech software, you are free. You can literally do everything. Technology creates a sense of independence because they don't have to rely on anyone to give them any type of uh, information. We do have a lot of qualified people with disabilities, but they, don't, they can't get into employment. The reality is, as soon as people have access to technology and skills training and they know how to access information, all you have to do is train them on your company products and they will be able to deliver. We would also re request them to develop uh, products that you know have been uh, well thought including persons with disabilities so that we are actually involved right at the designing level up until when the product is uh, out to the market there technology innovation has continued to enable visually impaired persons to function independently and ensure that they tap into the financial inclusion drive through mobile money transactions we did a proposal specifically to Safaricom company and we are thankful to them for they looked at our proposal and they started a journey with us called M-Pesa on Voice. I'm able to check my balance. That is their first step using IVR. IVR is simply internal voice response. I'm able with my privacy to pick my phone and press 456 and check my balance. They say that is just the first stage. They want to take all their processes through IVR. I've done my best with the abilities I have. I know I can do better. I know I can push myself harder. And because of that, I've never given up. You'll fall down and hurt yourself, but get up and move on. It's the right attitude that makes the difference.